Watch and learn. Hey everybody. So tonight I want to discuss, I'll do Deadsy, uh, Deadsy's commencement, because I plan on doing that as well as Phantasmagore. And I had something really profound to say about it and I just completely forgot what it was. Now it's just gonna be a bunch of meaningless drivel. But nonetheless, um, I'm still gonna do it all the same. Yeah, I, I had something specific to say. It doesn't matter. This was the record that sort of, I guess like, put them on the map back during the sort of, uh, the orgy, family values, corn sort of new metal blow up. Deadsy was lumped into that because they did share a lot of the same characteristics that the guys in orgy had, or at least on the surface they did. So this came out, I think, back in 99, and this had the keys to Gramercy Park on it, which was, a, a, I think, at least like a two-thirds of a full-on radio hit, because I know that song was everywhere to a point for a while. I ended up getting this record at the same time as Phantasmagore. I got it from Deja Vu Discs in Oshawa a number of years after it had been released. Um, I'd remembered them from, like the earlier corn days, the family values thing, and how, like I said, whenever somebody would mention Orgy, they would mention Deadsy. And so I was like, oh yeah, that's right, The Keys to Gramercy Park was a pretty good song. They had the record for like six bucks, so I figured why not? And then at the same time, they had Phantasmagore there, which was, I believe they're, I think they only have two full lengths, and that's the Commencement and uh, Phantasmagore. And that was like two bucks. So I figured, sure, I'll buy that as well. And Okay, other than the keys to Gramercy Park, the only song on here that I felt had enough wing, like had enough uh, strength to sort of get off the ground and take flight was She Likes Big Words. Because every other song on here, and I mean, that's, that's not to say that like songs, um, I don't know, like, like Winners or, or, or Brand New Love or, or, oh my God future years? Suddenly now I can't remember the other names of the other songs on this record. They're not bad, but they start off so strong. They start off completely reminiscent of the Keys to Gramercy Park slash She Likes Big Words, but they just don't get off the ground. This record just, it can't get going. The Keys to Gramercy Park kicks kick this in. It's super fun. And then the rest of the tracks sort of meander along, but they never really find their footing and they, they don't quite get to where Gramercy Park got to. They just sort of hover somewhere in the mid-range and the record just comes and goes. I mean, other than the two songs that I've already previously stated and this record's gone. Now, the one thing that I, I did love was their their synthesizers. I love how they're, they're just so, they're, they sound like they're just dripping the, like the digital perfection. Like I love how thick and rich their synths sound. So naturally on this record, they, I, in a way you could argue, obviously chose to cover Rush's Tom Sawyer because their lead synth, which is pretty much used on every track on this record, is pretty much identical to the synth that Lee and company employed on, well, everything Rush did throughout the 80s, but definitely on Tom Sawyer. And so that was cool because I felt that whenever I heard the synths on here, they reminded me of Rush. And I saw that it said Tom Sawyer was on here. And of course, I, I had no idea that it was going to be Rush's Tom Sawyer at that point. But when I looked at the back of Phantasmagore, there's Paint It Black was on there. And so from that, I figured, oh, they're tossing in a cover on both. So I put together that that probably was Rush's Tom Sawyer. And then once I had the record on for the first time, the synthesizers just match the synth used on Tom Sawyer so perfectly that it became more and more apparent that that probably was Rush's song. And sure enough, it is a solid but lifeless cover of Rush's absolutely fucking killer, Tom Sawyer, off of 1981's Moving Pictures. And yeah, this record's just kind of there. I liked uh, their costumes. I liked the, 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 the more, um, the, the fashion aesthetics of this band. I liked how they always kept everybody uniform and they looked the same. And this had a, um, a sort of like a, more like a, a fantasy world boarding school uniform look that all the guys in the band had. So I thought that was cool too. But this record's just sort of like whatever. And that is where I'm gonna leave it. 
I'm going to leave it with whatever. So, like always, if you like this review or you like this record, don't forget to do something nice for somebody. But please, most importantly, don't forget that the world is actually a better place because you are in it. Like always, I'm going to go. Have a good night.